Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Luke McCown and welcome to today's video. Uh, this is the Arizona Cardinals NFL Draft 2020 recap. All right, so the draft is wrapping up. We're on pick uh, 2.30 as I record this. And I decided since the Arizona Cardinals have no more picks, they're done for the day, to go ahead and start the recap videos. We're gonna do all 32 NFL teams. I'll do them in alphabetical order. So if your team is, you know, down on the list, you know, stick around, we're gonna get to them. And uh, we've got some things to say about everybody. It's, this is a fun time of year. You know, how do you feel content between the NFL draft and the regular season? 32 of these videos is going to take a while, but we're going to do them all. I'm committed. All right. So let's talk about the Arizona Cardinals. Um, last year, they really loaded up on skill position players. Uh, they had Kyler Murray as the number one overall pick. Uh, not a bad season for him last year. Um, in the process of last year's draft, they got him a lot of weapons. Andy Isabella, Keyshawn Johnson, Hakeem Butler, who hasn't seen the field yet. Um, they got Caleb Wilson at the end of the seventh round. Uh, they got Byron Murphy to help in the secondary. So they had, a, I felt like what they had a good draft last year. This year's draft is, a, is probably just as good. I think Cliff Kingsbury is doing a really great job in Arizona, getting this team, uh, to be a, a foundational core that he really wants. So um, Cardinals are heading in an interesting direction, and we also have to preface this draft with the fact that they got DeAndre Hopkins essentially in the second round. They absolutely fleeced the Houston Texans in that trade, so uh, they don't have a second round pick on the board, but DeAndre Hopkins was basically it, and when you're talking about DeAndre Hopkins for a second round pick, that is just a steal. So we're going. We're talking about going into the season with Kyler Murray having DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, and probably his last year, and then just a slew of second-year wide receivers uh, with a year under their belt. And just I'm excited for this offense this year. This could be pretty fun. All right, so let's talk about this year's draft. Um, as I said, no second-round pick, and leading up to the draft, um, all of the mocks, mine included. Uh, we're pretty set on either this was going to be offensive line, like uh, one of the top four offensive tackles, or they were going to go with C.D. Lamb, reuniting him with Kyler Murray. Um, I think in my final mock draft, I, I had one of the offensive tackles. I don't remember which one it was, but uh, that's really not uh, relevant now um, because they went with Isaiah Simmons, linebacker out of Clemson with the eighth overall pick in the first round. Now, this is actually um, a great selection, and I'll tell you why, because... As I said before, one of the scouting reports I read on him, this guy has the tackling radius of the size of the state of Montana. It's huge. He can go everywhere. And um, you figure the division that you're in. You've got uh, Seattle with Russell Wilson. You've got the 49ers who um, I can't wait to talk about them because they had a really good draft. They've had a really great weekend. Um, so you figure, you know, even the Rams, you know, with Robert Woods and all of them, you've got to account for a lot of space in this division. It is really wide open in terms of offense. So getting a guy uh, like a master of all trades, like Isaiah Simmons, who can just be all over the field is a, is a great pick to sort of defend against what is the current trend in their division. So I applaud it. Great. You know, it's fantastic. And the fact that they realized that they could get an offensive tackle later in the round made that pick possible. So as I said, no second round pick. In third round, pick 72 overall, Cardinals select Josh Jones, offensive tackle from Houston. Uh, this should be plug and play on the right side immediately. Um, Humphreys will stay on the left. And uh, Kyler Murray now has more protection that they desperately need. This is one of the worst offensive lines in the league, um, you know, arguably anyway. All right, next, uh, fourth round, they had two selections at pick 114. Lucky for two from uh, Utah, defensive tackle. This is a player I actually <laughs> had mocked at one point going late in the first to Seattle. I thought he would be like that typical Seattle player that nobody was expecting. And uh, I've even seen him as high as the second round, too. So to get him in the third, that's or to get him in the fourth, I mean, excuse me, is a pretty good pick. Uh, and then a few picks later at 131, we get Rashard Lawrence, defensive tackle from LSU. I, I think he was kind of underrated given the other talent coming out of LSU this year. You know, he had Kalon, Chase on, Grant Delpit. Um, so he was uh, not as well of a known name heading into this process, but still pretty good depth pick, pretty good value pick. You could see the trend in the positions that they were really focusing on defense this year. They got a couple pieces for the offense. So they wanted to sort of give the other side of the ball a little bit help after going heavy on wide receivers uh, last year. Um, then in the sixth round, you know, it was a little bit of a, you know, didn't have any more picks after that. So sixth round, pick 202, they get Evan Weaver, linebacker from Cal. Typical uh, 
inside linebacker off ball. Um, he'll help with run defense. I don't really have too much to say about him. I uh, wasn't very fond of the linebacker class pretty much after the fourth round. You know, once Malik Harrison and Willie Gay and Troy Dye were off the board. Um, uh, so somebody like Evan Weaver wasn't really on my radar, but uh, still not a bad pick for sixth round. Then moving into the seventh pick, 222 overall, Eno Benjamin running back from Arizona State. Now, I was kind of worried that they were going to go into this um, into this new season with just Kenyon Drake as a um, as a good piece in the backfield for Kyler Murray. Now, Eno Benjamin's actually a great pick. Now, they're worried about his speed. Um, I think he ran like a 4 6 7 40 time. I can't remember exactly. Um, so they're worried about the speed, but he's got some elusive traits to him, and he's uh, good after the catch. Um, he makes a lot of people miss. He's got a really good spin move. Uh, I think just on the broadcast, they were saying he was taught a spin move by Ladanian Tomlinson. So that's pretty cool. Um, so Eno Benjamin, I think is a great value pick in the seventh round at 222 overall. So overall, what do we like about this draft? I love the Isaiah Simmons pick. Um, I love the focus on defense, considering what you've got in the last draft and what you got in Kenyon Drake in the trade last year with Miami and what you got in the uh, Houston Texans trade out of DeAndre Hopkins. So you figure the offense is pretty much set. Uh, you just needed a tackle to solidify the offensive line. They took care of that with Josh Jones in the third round, who was supposed to be a lot projected to be a top 15, top 20 pick. So to get him in the third round, man, that's a steal. We saw a lot of steals this weekend. I am I can't wait to get through all these videos to talk about some of these players. Um, so yeah, uh, overall, very good draft. I'm, am I necessarily going to give these drafts grades for these videos? Eh, I don't know. Um, grade, grading drafts and picks is so subjective. Like I, I could say, you know, an F for that and a B for that. And, you know, you'll be all over the spectrum in terms of comparisons with, uh, other people that do this professionally for a living. So, um, overall, I will say good draft. Um, it's a second year building process, what it looks like for Cliff Kingsbury. And I think he's got the foundation that he wants. So this should be an interesting year, a good stepping stone for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, yeah, so that's it. Um, favorite pick of the draft uh, is probably Isaiah Simmons. Um, best value pick, I'm going to go with Eno Benjamin. And I'm not going to say that there's a worse pick in this draft because I think it's just, it, it hit all of the foundational needs that they need. So thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.